Daniel Sue is a public policy fellow with the Wilson Center Science and Technology Innovation Program and also a professor at Ohio State University. He joins us today to discuss the dark side of the internet, the dark underbelly. Uh, you, you describe it in a paper I read as the eBay of the underground economy. That's very vivid. Tell us, what exactly are we talking about? What's the type of activity? Thank you for having me uh, talking to you today. I think uh, the the, the main idea I'm trying to get across in that paper you read is uh, the, this concept of uh, the so-called the deep web. You know, many of us are constantly surfing the web uh, regularly these days, but lots of people are unaware that uh, uh, that's only the tiny little part of the uh, online database that we can have access to. Uh, for there's a lar very large amount of information that is not indexed by any of the search engines. Thus, it's not visible to uh, regular users like you and me. Or law enforcement people. Correct. So how do, <clears throat> how do people find it? I don't want to do a how-to on how to commit a crime, but how do people find it if it's so hidden? Yes. There are uh, uh, multiple different ways uh, to access uh, the, uh, the, the deep web, uh, and depending on your purpose. for. Uh, to, for beginners, uh, one easiest way to access the deep web is through alternative search engines because uh, there are all different kinds of search engines other than uh, 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 you know, Google or Bing. Are these search engines that are created just for this type of activity? Some, uh, some of those search engines are. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for example, there are some uh, search engines uh, that you can uh, access through the regular browser, but if you want to access the really the dark corner, the dark nets that are, you know, to see some of the criminal activities, what's going on uh, in the dark corner of the deep web, you need some special uh, browser, like mm -hmm. the Oni router, the Tor router. And also, once you downloaded that uh, uh, Oni browser, you also need a special search engine that uh, will get you to, to some of the dark corners of the deep web. So we're talking about things like drugs, guns, money laundering, forged documents, cyber, war cyber warfare tools. This sounds like, uh, in, a, in a generation ago, a, a sort of a menu of things available from the mob or from organized crime. Is this a migration of that type of activity into a high-tech environment? Absolutely. That's uh, uh, where the future cr uh, the uh, crime will take place, mm -hmm. and which poses uh, a challenge both for uh, the law enforcement community, also for the international community, because that's uh, many of those activities are crossing uh, on multiple continents and, and uh, uh, you know uh, country boundaries. I want to ask you a couple questions to see how much we know now. Mm -hmm. For example, do you have any way of measuring the level of activity? Can you put a dollar amount to it? Is there any way to know how big an issue where this is that we're talking about? Okay, there are some limited information. You know, for technical reasons, we don't know for sure what, you know, exactly okay. what's the amount of the volume of the activities. But here's what we do know uh, roughly in uh, approximate figures, that the deep web in terms of the volume of the data is about 400, somewhere between 400 to 550 times bigger than the, the surface web that we really? are, yeah, that we can access to. That's number one. Number, uh, <clears throat> Number two is I have to clarify for your audience that uh, not all the activities happening uh, on the deep web are necessarily criminal mm -hmm. because there are uh, uh, a variety of uh, uh, users uh, of the deep web stuff, uh, including journalists, including uh, political dissidents, uh, and also um, uh, you know, many other uh, uh, regular law-abiding citizens because they are con deeply concerned that we are increasingly uh, inter- uh, uh, or Too much uh, monitoring? Uh, yeah, yeah, surveillance, yeah, surveillance, surveillance state. And the, part of their goal is to escape the state surveillance uh -huh, of their sense. daily activity. So do we know anything also about geographically, where is this most common or is it something that's impossible to measure? Uh, we have some, that's a part of the goal of my ongoing research, to have a, a better handle of the spatial temporal dimension of those uh, activities happening uh, over the deep web. But uh, right now, we only have limited information. Mm -hmm. But we know lots of things, for example, happening in Russia, Ukraine, because they uh, offer some, uh, uh, you know, bulletproof, uh, you know, hosting services. 
Is there is there a way to shut down the bad activity while still allowing the portals for people who are using it for positive reasons? That's that's a great question. Uh, technically speaking, no, mm -hmm. because two years ago, FBI uh, shut down the the eBay of the online drugstore called Silk Road. But since during the past 15, 15 months, there are all different kinds of other, like Silk Road 2, Silk Road 3, have been popping up uh, uh, on the dark net. And, so and, I'm sorry, keep you talking. cannot uh, completely shut it down. D Daniel, on, on, in terms of non-state actors versus state actors, do we have any kind of sense of how often these types of activities occur at the state level, at the government level, or versus individuals? Right now, we don't have a, a, a clue on that yet. But what we do know is that there are lots of uh, uh, non-state actors, uh, but they are doing lots of malicious stuff that could threaten national security, especially in the con context of uh, the war on terrorists. So in a, a case like, say, the Sony hack, mm -hmm. the, a cyber attack of that nature, how will we ever know if it was, in, in fact, North Korea or if it was individuals? How, how do we sort that out? Is there a way? Yes, there are some uh, uh, technical ways to trace uh, in terms of uh, out where those information have been routed. But that's a part of the, the design of the Onion uh, network because they normally, any particular type of information will jump around like a 6,000 different servers. So, so technically, it's uh, almost impossible to pin down its geographical location. But ironically, in the context of separate security, the location of anything is pretty much everything because we have to know exactly precisely where they are coming from in order to de develop effective countermeasures. Yeah, everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Exactly, almost. that's the dilemma. The, the uh, a final thought about just where we are on the on the uh, uh, progress scale. In other words, are those who are using these uh, technologies for uh, nefarious purposes far ahead of law enforcement, far ahead of governments and intelligence agencies, what is the balance between those who are conducting the activities and those who are attempting to prevent them? I, I think in terms of uh, especially the criminal activities, they are probably uh, ahead of the, the legal framework we have and also the capacity of the, uh, uh, the law enforcement uh, across the globe. And that's really uh, very disturbing, in uh, my opinion, yes. because those uh, activities, uh, unless we develop effective countermeasures, they could pose a serious threat to the order of the global economy and also to national security. Are, are people starting to pay attention? Yes, but unfortunately, lots of people are still blissfully ignorant about the existence of the dark web, that deep down. And, oh, and we need to raise uh, public awareness about uh, the multiple dimensions of uh, the existence of uh, the deep web. Well, thank you for continuing to try to do just that. And as your study progresses, maybe yeah. we can speak again in the future Absolutely. when you can quantify more of this activity. Yeah. Thank Great. you. Thank well, you, Daniel.